Hello everyone, welcome to Linux Desktop December part 16, where I'm looking at the Pantheon desktop, which can be found in elementary OS, as well as I think just about every other Linux distro. So it started out live in 2011. It's written in C and Vala and uses the GTK3 framework. Starting with a look at the memory usage, you can see we're using 492 meg of RAM with nothing much open. Those of you who are familiar with the Pantheon desktop will notice I have customised it slightly with the order of the close, minimise, maximise buttons. The default is a close button on the left hand side, a maximise button on the right hand side. No minimise button at all. So I've used the elementary tweak tool to enable that. The top panel is called the wing panel and contains the slingshot launcher. Again I've customised this to tweak the number of icons that are shown. We also get a time, date and calendar, and you'll notice the date and the calendar is not actually a date of the video. Yes, I've been doing these a bit in advance. On the top right hand side we have a keyboard switcher, volume control which contains the play, pause, next and previous controls for the music, network, notifications and shutdown. The shutdown menu is fairly plain, but at least we do have the option of having suspend in the menu without having to hold down the alt key. Yes, I'm looking at you, GNOME Desktop, and how obscure is that shortcut? At the bottom of the screen we have the Plank Desktop, which I suppose is why people can think this desktop looks very reminiscent of the Mac OS desktop. So quite a few of the applications pre-installed on the elementary OS are Pantheon specific, really, with the way that they're styled. You'll notice that quite a few functions have been crammed into the application title bar. And for instance, here on the File Manager, which is not Nautilus, that we have the Folder Control View, if I go into actually opening some pictures, it's actually in the download folder. You'll notice there's a couple of extra functions in the application title bar. But it's interesting there that it's gone for the dark theme when you actually have a photo open. Here's something that's a bit unusual for the pre-installed image viewer. We do have a few image tweaks. Nothing too complicated. And crop, straighten it, reduce red eye, adjust the photo color. And uh, there's this automatic function as well. So. It is some good attention to detail where you get a consistent look across the applications. The application searcher only picks up applications on the system, it doesn't do anything about documents. But it is pretty responsive. I know we've got VLC on the screen, but yeah, got it within a couple of key presses. Inkscape, yep. Yeah. And I can scroll up and down the list with the arrow keys. So I can launch an application from the keyboard. Dragging the application around to the side of the screen, we can resize to halves, even though it didn't look like it was going to. It has done. Can it do quadrants? No. To the top of the screen? Yeah, maximises it. It's fine. Let's take a look at this multitasking view. So it's like a desktop switcher, so I can push applications to another desktop. That's just adding additional desktops. And let's put another application on this. So. Again, let's open this photo viewer back up. You get an iconified view of the application that's open on each desktop. So at least it gives you an idea even if you can't actually see the application. So what happens if I push another application across there? Ah, shrinks the icons down a bit. Good idea. I have to say that's one of the better desktop switchers that I've seen. Even though I'm, I'm just not really into desktop switching really, it's not something I've really got on with now. I, I used to do it, but now I've just sort of gone back to the one desktop view. But if you like working with the multiple desktops, then yeah, Pantheon does have a very good switcher. Could be worth considering. The Scratch text editor does have a bit of code highlighting on the colours. I did have a bit of a problem loading more files in. I'm going to go back to the file manager. If I look at the connection to server. Now it should be really straightforward this. I've got a server detail, so uh, something like sky.tzd on ssh folder home. So why does it say unable to mount folder? I can't really recall this problem in my review. And again, I can't recall if I actually tried it. You can customize the color of the title on the folders. So I can select them from the list here by right clicking and then just choosing the color. It's not quite as flexible as some of the other file managers, like the Kaha file manager in Mate, where you can change the colour of the whole icon. And to a certain extent, KDE has that feature as well, um, although not quite as plentiful as Kaha. Uh, there's no split screen browsing. I was hoping to press F3 to enable that. F4, terminal feature, nope. 
custom views between folders perhaps uh, no I don't think it does does it you can just change it between the views but if I go to a different folder uh, let's say I want the thumbnails here uh, go back to home no no it's just a switcher the music player does not display the thumbnails it just gets a generic thumbnail here in terms of stability though everything seems to be okay launching Qt applications well they've rendered okay doesn't make the best use of the title bar like the GTK based applications kind of do but at least it's rendered okay. The application center handles both the updates and install of new applications. When you have an update available on the system, it displays a little number of how many updates are available. That's a nice feature. It is a bit basic though in the application center. I mean, if I go to the application here, there's screenshots on some of the applications, but one feature it is lacking is the application ratings and reviews. And finally, we'll have a look at the tweak tool. Now to get to that, I have to look into the settings. So system settings. The tweak tool is a third party application. So we've got the option of changing the themes. Most importantly here though, we've got the option of changing the window controls. So this is the default view that you would get. Just the close and maximize icons. We can go for the windows view. Close only or minimize right or minimize left. So you can change the font, the animations on the opening and closing of applications, and the behavior in the file manager. Oh, that was useful, taking away the single click because I remember it punishes you if you start double clicking on the folders, just like delays responding. The configuration of the launcher, how many rows and columns you want to display. So change around that. It does seem to be a different number than it actually says here, but at least the adjustment is working. Overall, it does seem to be a reasonable alternative to the GNOME desktop. Some of the behavior is slightly different and you've got a bit more flexibility on the adjustment. So yeah, I can kind of like it for that. I do like some of the consistency on the styling within the applications. Although I think it would take a bit of getting used to with uh, how much is jammed into the application title bars. Well, thanks for watching. See you all later.